So far we have seen simple and compound gear trains where the axis of all the gears were fixed. Now we are going to look at gear trains where the axis will be moving or orbiting in space around other gears. And just to show you how dramatically different the results are going to be, here is a simple coin trick. So here we have two identical coins and we are going to treat them like two meshing gears. And suppose I rotate this coin through some angle. Then this will rotate through the same angle but in the opposite direction. Nothing unexpected. This is like a simple gear train. Now imagine this coin is fixed and this one is made to roll on it without slip. So it is going to kind of walk over the other coin. In that case, what do you expect? When this completes one orbit, how many rotations it would complete? Uh, top of the head reaction is, well, if they are of the same size, one orbit, one round trip should cause one rotation. But let us check that. So we will start rolling the coin. And now it has completed quarter of a revolution. So this was our initial position. And you can see the coin has become upside down. So it has undergone half the rotation in quarter of an orbit. And the trend we can check further. Now we have completed one rotation because the coin is upright again. But it has completed only half the orbit. So the number of rotation and number of orbits are not equal. Say one complete orbit and we, are, we have completed two revolutions, two rotations. So this is what happens when one gear starts orbiting the other in engagement. Let us now replace those two coins with gears. So this gear has replaced our fixed coin. This has replaced our orbiting coin. Uh, this orbiting gear will be called as the planet and you might have guessed this is called as the sun. Uh, we are going to do two generalizations. Number one, the sun and the planet could be of different size. And number two, though the axis of the sun is fixed, it is free to rotate about that axis. In physical arrangements, the sun and the planet are connected by a link like this, which supports the planet. This is called as the arm. And additionally, we may have a internal gear going around this whole arrangement and engaging with this planet. It is called as the annulus or the ring gear. This sort of gear trains are called as epicyclic gear trains where one or more gears will have their axis orbiting in space. Epicyclic gear trains have more than one degree of freedom. That means we'll be able to choose more than one input independently. Let me show you how. So we are going to set this sun in motion, but we have kept the arm fixed. So this is like a simple gear train. And uh, now on top of this, if we give this arm some motion, then it will become a epicyclic gear train. So we are choosing the motion of the sun and the arm independently. So let me give this arm some movement and move it again. So now the sun, the arm and everything else is moving. And we chose the motion of the sun and arm independently. So this has got two degrees of freedom. Now you might think, uh, what's a big deal about having more degrees of freedom? Well, if you put many of these together into a gearbox, you will realize the benefit. Because such a gearbox will not need any engaging and disengaging of gears. You can keep all of them in engagement all the time. To change the velocity ratio, all you need to do is grab one gear and fix it and release another one. That combination will give you a velocity ratio. To change it, you just release the gear that you had grabbed now and you fixed some other one and it changes. So all you need is some kind of braking arrangement thereby you can stop any gear at will. Of course it quickly becomes complicated and therefore we will not be able to draw these sort of diagrams or make much sense of it. So we will look at this schematic representation often used. So here we have instead of a front view a schematic cross-sectional side view. So this is our sun it is engaging with a compound planet mounted on this arm. On the other side, the planet is engaging with this ring gear. This sort of diagram also helps you calculate the number of teeth. The sun here has 40 teeth. So we go up to here. Then we add this 16 of the planet. So we have come up to this level and then 32 more 
for the other side of the planet. That makes 88 teeth on the ring gear.